How is everyone doing? Good? Awesome. So I was mind blown when I learned that the average person is clicking, tapping, and pressing their keyboards around 10,000 times every day. This is not even uh, including developers. So you would imagine that people that use their, their keyboards for coding and, and such, uh, that number would go way up. But if you think about it, 10,000 times is quite a lot. It's actually 3.5 million half move, hand movements a year. Think about this, 3.5 million hand gestures that we do in order to just interact with technology today. And this is very mind opening. So one of the things that we started to look into was scrolling and we found that just with a very simple Google search, someone was also wondering how much we actually scroll on a daily basis, or in a span of like two years or so. And the question was basically very interesting because scrolling is something that we do every day and is part of a lot of our interactions. So naturally, there was already a very smart answer on Reddit. And someone came with this very clever equation of like, all right, assuming that everyone is scrolling around 90 minutes a day or so, which is not unrealistic at all, um, the answer would be that we are scrolling 147 miles every two years. Do you believe that? 147 miles every two years. And that really speaks about what we're doing with our bodies, right? And it also shifts into the idea of like, how come we are moving ourselves 3.5 million times every year? My name is Alex Castillo. I'm a co-founder at Neurosity. I previously worked for Netflix and Grubhub. I'm part of the Google Developer Expert Program because I have a passion for the web. And I also have a passion for the brain. And this is very important to me because having the opportunity to start mixing those two is, means a great deal. So we started Neurosity last year. And Neurosity, we're all about empowering the mind. And what does that mean? Well, the first thing that we are doing in order to empower minds is creating hardware and software so you can use our thoughts in order to interact with technology. Kind of going back to that problem of all the hand gestures we are outputting in order to interact with technology. So very excited to be showing you what we've been working in kind of like stealth mode for the past year and change. On the hardware front, we started building a brain computer interface not just any brain computer interface, but a device that could really start providing value to people's lives. And something that could have enough power that can start allowing people, giving people the tools so they can start communicating with other people and with computers in a more human way. So very excited to show you uh, Notion. Notion is our take on a brain computer interface. Uh, it's actually a very special type of hardware, and uh, I'm very excited to be demoing you some of the things that we could do today in order to start chipping away with those hand gestures. One thing you should know is that, of course, it has a JavaScript API, so it basically speaks web first. JavaScript is a first class citizen for this type of interactions. When you start going to look on like, how are we handling inputs on the web, right? those click events, those keyboard events. This is kind of the future of what we think the next generation of interaction events look like. We run machine learning on the device for many reasons. One reason is that we believe in not sending your raw brain waves anywhere. And we believe in doing all the processing on the device, so what you get out of it is just metadata. And we also have cloud, of course. 
But when you start thinking about brainwaves, it introduces a new set of problems. If you look back on those web inputs or those events that you are working with currently, you start maybe observing for clicks, maybe not, but if you start looking for the events and the rate in which those events happen, you will notice that on a single, on a given second, you're not getting several or dozens, you're getting, you know, you're getting a few. And this is very simple to work with, right? Because we only have to handle so much. Of course, we're lucky that we have a rich, you know, browser environment and APIs that do most of this heavy lifting for us. But when we're talking about brainwaves, we're actually talking about thousands of inputs of data points every second. Actually, around 2,000. So given that we have so much data, right, with this new hardware, we need to start thinking about how we're going to turn that into something that we can use. How are we going to start taking that data and turn it into something that is as intuitive as the events that we're dealing with today on the web. So this is where machine learning comes into play. And as far as machine learning, I wanna give you a little bit of an overview of what it looks like, because we're talking about a device that you put on your head, it reads data in real time, and then it's crunching all those numbers as quickly as possible to give you something meaningful. So the first, I guess, near sign type of concept that I want to introduce is motor imagery. This is part of, of a building block that we are using. So motor imagery is when our brains, right, specifically the motor cortex, the motor cortex is responsible for planning and executing voluntary movements and is like right here on top of your head. And as we move, right, all those, the motor cortex is responsible for sending down those electrical signals that allow us to move our bodies. So by accessing data in the motor cortex, we found that we're also able to detect motor-based intentions. And intentions because it turns out that without actually moving your arm, but by thinking about moving your arm, the motor cortex will activate and will produce enough electrical activity that we can detect. And that's exactly what we're using machine learning for. So when you think about an imagined movement, I like to use the left hand pinch as an example. Like just imagine for a second without moving your arm or your hands, thinking of how you would just pinch your left hand. And that that you just experience is like the type of thought that we are actually kind of like listening to. Um, two, with this hardware, or one of the ones. So this is when we start and we build an API to the brain that can give you this type of information so you can benefit from the interactions of imagined thoughts. We call this the Notion API. And I'm gonna give you a very quick overview um, with some code examples on how that looks like. So assuming I heard someone laughing. Is it because I call my variable mind? Yeah, right, that makes sense. We're not talking about document here. We're not talking about the window object. We are effectively accessing brain data, so I guess why not call it what it is, right? Uh, so we instantiate a new notion and we pass some information about what device we're really dealing with here. And then the very simple example is as easy as doing dot predictions on a given label or multiple labels like a left hand pinch or a left type of imagined movement and subscribe into it. This very simple example, we just like start outputting predictions in real time and they will look something like this. This object containing the um, uh, specific labels will output a probability from zero to one. So from zero to one on a given millisecond, what are the odds of you imagining that label that we're describing here? So if we take back the example of the left hand pinch, if you start thinking about that imagined movement, what are the odds of that actually being activated in the motor cortex? And that is the number that you get as the probability. 
But that is not exactly what we want because given the odds, it's very useful, right? It would basically tell you when you're thinking about it, but we have this thing called intent that is specifically an API that would basically wrap the predictions into something that would only fire when you intend to use that um, imagined motor-based intention. And it looks something like this. It's pretty much the same thing that we replace predictions with kinesis. So what we're calling this API kinesis is the intent of a motor-based intention. So far, so good. So the first thing I want to do is just, I just want to give you a little glimpse on what that, this looks like in practice. And I want to invite someone just to join me on stage so we can put the device on. We can see the output of the machine learning happening in real time in a web type of experience. So anyone is up for the challenge, please raise your hands. Yeah? All right, I see a hand over here. You want to come over? <laughs> Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, we might or we might not have met before, just saying. Um, so, yeah, let's just put this on you. Uh, and the way you wear is pretty much, you just put it on like, like this, with this part pointing like outwards. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. So, do you mind stepping onto this side? And maybe just like turn around so they see what you're wearing. Oh, nice, there you go. Awesome. So. We're just gonna show a very simple visualization of the probabilities going from zero to one. Very simple, okay? Actually, just remember, I'm not running that demo locally. So I might as well just jump to the better demo, which is just um, uh, scrolling a web page. Is, is, is that better for you? Yeah? All right, so the idea is that we're gonna use the same principle. We're gonna use the left-hand page as an imagined thought. So each time there's intent from the Kinesis API, from you imagining a left and pinch, that's gonna trigger an event that's gonna scroll down a web page. <laughs> Sounds cool? <laughs> All right, so let's do it. All right, I'm running this locally on my computer. All right, so the first, all right, so as you imagine, the left hand pinch is gonna start scrolling down, all right? So why don't you just like relax and stop? All right, go ahead and start thinking about a left hand pinch type of movement. So thank you so much. Please give it up for Momita, right, is your name? Yeah, thank you so much. Actually, stay over here. Um, so there's something that I tried to do before that completely went wrong, but I think this is the perfect opportunity to give it another try. And you saw me that scrolling down a web page um, on my computer in a local page, which is fine, but I was thinking maybe she can just scroll like everyone else's phone. <laughs> Only if you want, I mean. <laughs> right, so do you want it? Yeah? All right, so put this back on, uh, and then I publish the same page onto a website, onto an actual public domain. So if you go to thinktoscroll.com, you're gonna get the same experience. So I'm gonna do the same thing here, and I'm gonna go to think to scroll. So for now, I guess you're going for it. All right. So, uh, no, yeah, I'm going to start it again if you want. When the bar turns yellow, that means that the intent is low. When it turns green, as you can see, that means that the intent is actually activated. I have a very low threshold, around 50% for this example. Are you loading the page? Is it scrolling for you? Can you do you mind showing me? I want to see it. Like last time it didn't work. Oh, nice. So I'm going to go ahead and take a picture here. Just hold it up, please. I want you in the picture. Do you mind stepping right here? I want you in the picture, yeah. Yeah. There's plants here. All right. <laughs> Look that way. 
So, all right, so you got all the way to the end. Nice. Please give it up for Mamita. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, it's all good. There you go. So, one of the cool things about accessing the brain, as you can see, is that once you have that data, right, that metadata, you can do a lot of things with it, but by harnessing the power of the web, you can see like someone, a single person, thinking about an intent, you can see it actually propagating like pretty much the cloud and everywhere. So this thing would also work on like anywhere in the world. So she could be scrolling a device, I don't know, in Russia, for example. Um, there were like around 109 devices logged in by the time this happened. That's pretty cool. Uh, I think I missed the window when everyone was on, so probably that was a little bit more. And the cool thing is that everyone, this mostly happened here, but why is someone in Sunnyvale opening that web page? I have no idea. Anyway, so that is why a thing to scroll is, is all about, is harnessing the intent from a motor-based intention type of thought so we can interact with the devices around us. You can see how the same thing could apply to other experiences, whether it is you're controlling your TV or Netflix or your smart home and you can turn on and off your light bulb to many other things. Think about all the devices that we're using and those 3.5 million interactions that we're doing every year. The example that I show you can be simplified into these few lines of code. We're using the mind that we created. We subscribe to Kinesis, left hand pinch, and then we have a function that just scrolls down our page based on what device you're on. So one thing that is very important to note is that this requires training, right? Every brain is different, so we need to give the the machine learning a little bit of a glimpse of what it is our interpretation of what that imagined thought is, where there is a left hand pinch, a left or a right, left or a right hand movement. We need to give a program, right, a little bit of a snapshot of our, our thoughts. Just like when you're training your phone to record either your fingerprint or your face so you can unlock it later. So Momita didn't do a training, so she was using uh, other people's classifiers, mostly uh, my classifiers, my partner's classifiers, some other people that we tested on. That's why I had the threshold so low, around 50%. But as you start um, doing a, uh, the training required, right, for a few minutes, it will start recording that and it will calibrate for your brain so the intent is more accurate as you use it. One of the things that we're working on next is really just better intent, is the idea that we could really have that pure thought of exactly what you want and it only fires exactly when you want it. Could we potentially get rid of training? Could we potentially start kind of, not completely, but kind of reverse engineering the brain so we really know what these motor-based thoughts are all about? I would love to get rid of the training. I would love for it to be a plug and play experience. Every technology that emerges to do something like this at some point has a learning curve. There might be that in this, but I want you to think about what it will, how did it feel like when you were starting to use computers for the first time and you were learning how to use your keyboard or your mouse? We were not typing super fast back then. The whole idea is that we start getting very good on how to think to control our experiences around us. Instead of using our hands, just cut that part of having to use another interface that you have to operate with your body. Just use your thoughts. Another cool concept is that since we're accessing brain data, why not also additionally to accessing those model-based intentions, we start accessing all that type of data. This is, after all, an API to the brain. So what about some type of like awareness? Awareness, for us, is very interesting because it's not really something that you're in intent for, right? 
awareness is more like a background process, whether you are relaxed or whether you are falling asleep or where you are very focused. So what would an API to get this type of data would look like? I have a very simple example, okay? And I'm not gonna tell you, I'm gonna ju just gonna show you the code. And then I'm gonna ask someone what we're trying to do. This almost reads like written English, so let's just go for it. Do we just save a live or what? This is why working this technology is, is so important for us, and this is why we say that we believe in empowering the mind. Could we let technology give us a hand when we can't? This is one of the things that we're experimenting with, and we're very passionate about making this technology accessible because we know what type of impact we could be creating here. So that is why we started Neurosity. And our vision, our mission is all about empowering the mind and giving people the tools so they can really know more about themselves and maybe let other things get to know them better so we could potentially have a happier, more productive and healthier life. We are... Um, very close to launching our, um, our dev kit. So basically allowing a handful of people, maybe a little more, to get their hands on one of these. And we know that we cannot have a successful product without getting the feedback from the community and the people, the creators, the innovators, pretty much you guys. And we're very excited to be starting to understand what are the use cases and what people really want it for. That's why we're uh, just launching a limited run in the next few months, uh, where we're gonna be shipping some of these devices out. We're gonna be open sourcing the Notion API, and we're gonna start really getting ready to, I don't know, maybe take over the world with JavaScript. So if there's one thing I wanna really leave you with is that it's amazing that with the current skills that we have right now, but with the right tools, we can def definitely make a difference. And we might be getting closer to getting to that point where we can leverage our knowledge and our minds for far more than we're doing today. Thank you. <laughs>